welcome back to the channel. Today, I'm just making a quick $1,800 build for the Ryzen 5 1600X. As you can see, I included a Newegg link to where you can pre-order this, and this video will hopefully be released on the 10th, because I want to get out all my Ryzen 5 builds before the release date, because I think I'll get it better that way. I put in the Corsair H100i V2 because I think you can probably get a pretty good amount of overclocking with that. The MSI X370 Pro Carbon then is a RGB motherboard, and that should also help you with overclocking since it's X370, plus it has a very, very good uh, port setup. You have seven audio ports again, including the digital out, you have a USB Type-C, you have uh, five type A 3.0s, I think, and then these are 2.0s. You also have the old PS2 port. I still don't know why they're putting that on these new boards. They expect so many people to be using bad keyboards. And it has some built-in HD graphics or whatever. So that's that. It's only $170, $180. It also has an M.2 port, I believe. I forgot to check that. Yes, it does. Right here, you can see it has the M.2 port, and I believe this is RGB by seeing this right here. I went with the HyperX Fury. It's a 32GB kit. It's 2666MHz, and that's not the best you can get, but... Uh, I don't know, that's one I went with, I don't remember why, but it's 4x8GB kit, which means it's gonna take up all your slots. If you want something faster, you should be able to get it, just you gotta pay a little more. To utilize that M.2 port, I got a Samsung 960 EVO, it's 250GB, that should be enough to run some basic programs that you need to open all the time, and of course, the operating system. Then I went with the ever more popular Western Digital 1TB, who doesn't have that? The GTX 1070 Strix from ASUS, because it's RGB once again. And then I went with the Fan Fantex Enthu Evolve, it's the Tempered Glass Edition. And, uh, that's pretty much it. FS FSP Group, 450 watt power supply. It's semi-modular, which should help with cleaning up the cables. But it's a very, well, not that great price. But for semi-modular, 450, 80 plus platinum, that's very hard to find. Of course, you can go with a little bigger power supply, and then it'll be probably cheaper per watt, but this is just the best power supply for 450 watts I could find. This price includes the Windows 10 Home 64-bit. In total, it's a few dollars away from 1800 and so that's it for this build. If you guys are planning on building this, I do recommend you do a little more research and don't just take my word for it, because you guys should research a few more things to get the products you need and a good price. But anyway, if you like this build, give it a thumbs up, but if you think it's no good, give it a thumbs down, and I would really like to uh, talk about this build in the comments below, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.